Begin by laying out your tools and materials, including a clean sheet of glass at least four inches larger than the largest piece of graphite mat you'll be using. Normally I would apply mold release to the glass, but in this how-to I will simply give it a light coating in WD-40, which is more available to the average do-it-yourself. At this point, double check the glass is large enough for your piece and that the carbon fiber is free from any debris. Now mix your resin. Depending on your application, you may opt to use either a poly or epoxy based resin. If you are on a tight budget, even Bondo fiberglass resin will do fine as long as the part will only see limited direct sunlight. No matter what resin system you opt to use, it is extremely important to thoroughly mix the catalyst with the resin. Once you mix, set it aside and allow it to activate. For simple pieces such as this, I like to apply heat to accelerate the curing process. If heat is not an option, you can also add an additional 20% activator to the resin mix. Keep in mind this will shorten the working time with the mixture. One more time, ensure that the front face of the graphite is clean and free of any debris. Now gently stretch the fabric into a uniform pattern. This is the pattern that you'll see and gives carbon fibers distinct appearance. Starting in the middle of the mat, begin to apply your activated resin. You want to use just enough to wet out the fabric and ensure there are no air pockets. Any excess resin will only make the laminate weak and needlessly heavy. Apply more resin as needed and gently work out any air pockets. Keep in mind this is the only layer anyone will see. Use care to preserve the pattern you achieved earlier. Once you have the first layer wet out, work any excess resin to the sides and adjust the pattern carefully by pulling it straight one last time. The second layer of graphite is applied in much the same way as the first, applying resin in the center and working at ensuring there are no air pockets. The key thing to remember in this step is use just enough pressure to remove the air pockets, but not so much as to alter the pattern of the underlying mat. When finished, you should have very little excess resin applied to the piece. Any resin that is puddling should be worked to the outer edges. If the part you are building needs to be rigid, apply at least three layers of mat. For trim pieces, two layers is usually enough. Another benefit of working on glass is the ability to inspect the piece before the resin has a chance to cure. What you are looking for is any anomalies in the pattern or air pockets. Air pockets are easy to correct by gently working in the outside edge. Anomalies can be pulled out usually if the resin has not cured to a state that has started to gel. Now apply a large block of wood or another piece of glass to the top of the laminate. This will ensure that in the curing process, the mat stays in a uniform pattern as well as aid in removal of excess resin. Depending on the resin system you are using and the curing process you opted for, you will now need to wait anywhere from 15 minutes to 12 hours. Once the resin has set and cured, you can now remove the top block of wood or piece of glass. Before you peel up the laminate, I suggest trimming three sides of it. The fourth will remain untrimmed until after removal and will aid in peeling up off the glass without damaging any of the sides. When the time comes to peel up the laminate, start on the fourth side that you left untrimmed in the earlier step. If you've applied enough mold release or W40, the piece will lift cleanly away leaving a high gloss finish on one side. Until the laminate has had adequate time to fully cure, it will be somewhat flexible. This is the time frame that you should apply it to any object you want if the object has contour. Once the piece is cured, it will be completely rigid.